Hey guys, welcome back to Karawa Sho- Welcome to episode 5 of Karawa Shoujo. But before we get into it though, I'd like to remind you guys to be safe from wherever you're watching and to enjoy the video and to make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and share the videos so that way our growth continues. And with that being said, let's get into it. When we last, where we last left off was, we had just gone to the library and met Hanako, and and we met Lily, and yeah, we we met Lily in the tea room. We met Yuko and Hanako, and now when we last left off, we're here with Kenji out in the hallway, make pre prepping to make another decision. It could go either way here, to be honest. It doesn't matter. Yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it. There are a lot of cute girls here. It's a strangely disproportionate amount. I believe this is one of the dark secrets of this school. I tried to warn you, man, but you did but did you listen? I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets? Yes, dark secrets. Extremely dark. Like a black hole. Have you noticed the number of girls at this school is slightly, but significantly higher than the number of boys. It's like 60-40. He turns his head to the left and stares off at, into the distance at nothing. Why is it like this? I mean, it... I mean, to the untrained eye, it doesn't appear to be that bad, but that's a full 20%. One would think that a school with such a huge pool of women would be a man's dream, but no. What I'm about to tell you could blow your mind. Are you ready? I don't know where this is going, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out now. No, I'm not ready. I only get as far as turning the doorknob before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. I believe that the school was a battleground. The site of a feminist infiltration. This disparity in the number of men to women is a clear sign how far they have come. In, in the case of this cold war turns hot they will have superiority in numbers just another skirmish in the eternal war against the forces of the feminists they're everywhere in japan women outnumber men it's not a 60 40 split but it's only a matter of time man even in america women are are the majority by hair they're building up their numbers in the pat in the past the build up of military has always been the clearest sign of imminent war Japan is just the first step. Our e economy is badass, and the country itself is small and isolated, a huge part of the Pacific in terms of political value. The perfect target. They are so cunning, as expected of women. Soon, the day, the day will come when Kenji's voice trails off ominously. That's why you can't trust them. They'll string you along and then kill you, just as they killed me. You'll end up just like me. Oh, hell no! I can't stop myself from blurting it out. Hey, what the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. That's the best I can think of. So you're not supposed to say something... So? So? You're not supposed to say something like that? Damn, so rude. Where was I? Oh yeah, vast feminist conspiracy. Stop it! Stop! I lost you way, way, way back there somewhere. Somewhere on feminist infiltration. Too hard to follow. Too hard to follow? It's cool. I have some graphs and, and stuff in my room. And puppets. You like puppets? No puppets. You don't like puppets. Okay, graphs are still cool though, right? He speaks energetically, res responding almost before I'm done talking, moving his hands at, at, in an animated way as he continues to rant on. This is too strange. I had pegged him as a relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. Something on your mind, dude? Just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in an insane world. Kenji frowns, looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? That can't be, because I'm the last man, sane man in this insane world. That's my dream. You can't just steal a man's dream. What the hell? There can't be two last sane men. It would invalidate the whole last part, and that part is kind of important. There can only be one. Like in that foreign movie where there could be only one, and in the end there's only one two left because that's the point. I have never seen anyone talk so heatedly about and so defensively about absolutely nothing before. 
Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my grasp. I also have a list of other dark and complex conspiracies about that this school holds. As tangled as, quit finish my analogy for me. Be a pal. I'm going to bed now. It's extremely late. That doesn't sound like an analogy, but whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain the vast feminist conspiracy to them. Denial was a terrible thing. Later. He claps me on the back then vanishes into his room so quickly and quietly. It's like he didn't even open the door but, in, but instead walked right through like, like a ghost. I don't know if I can fully digest what just happened, so I give up and just go to my room, kicking off my shoes before falling face first into bed. It takes me some time to relax and get up so I can start so I can get started on homework. It's because of the sheets are so cool and comforting against my cheeks and it feels so good just lying there with my eyes closed. This school is like some kind of bizarre and surreal island. It's isolated on top of a mountain, and each person is stranger than the last. I just can't seem to fit in. What irony. One would think that fitting in a place that's made for people who aren't fed anywhere else would be easy. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Although I say that, it doesn't help. Take the edge off, and, and the words are left echoing off my empty walls. I guess it's not as bad as I expected, though. This place is really more of a school and less a hospital pretending it's a school than I thought it would be. If nothing else, the scenery is the scenery is beautiful. I open one eye, seeing the school books and bottles of pills arranged side by side on my desktop. Maybe this place is too much like a normal school after all. I feel very tired this morning, probably because yesterday itself was a very tiring day. On top of that, I woke up far earlier than necessary. After saying hi to Shizune and Misha, I start doing the work as instructed from the board. It already looks like today is going to be heavy. I don't have a problem with that now, though. Shizune and Misha might jump on me for trying to get an answer about whether or not I have d decided to join the student council, even if it's just one day. I wouldn't put it past them to try, and I don't have an answer for them if they do, so this situation is convenient for me. About ten minutes into class, Hanako walks in and takes a seat. But no one looks at her. The teacher doesn't even comment on her lateness. He does, however, stop us to try to say that we're going to break into groups again. I turn my head to see if Shizune and Misha are looking at me. Shizune gives me a smile that's in equal parts cute and menacing. This smile says, we have you now. There is no escape. He chan looks like we're together again. Yay, yay. Misha all, always sideways while, leans sideways while Shizune pushes her desk closer to mine. There really is no escape now, unless I were to jump through the window. Jumping through the window isn't the best option, sadly. What's wrong, He chan Oh, he chan have you been thinking about what you said yesterday? You said that you would think about joining the student council, <laughs> didn't you? It's okay, He chan We were thinking about it after you left. It would be rude to expect you'd already have an answer for us this early, right? Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm so happy that you were able to have a laugh at my expense. Even more pleased to know that you would. That you that you both know how crazy the two of you can be. Now that that's over, Shizune snaps back into serious mode and smacks today's assignment with a with the back of her hand in an overly dramatic, important way. When I actually look at, at the stuff, it's mostly just reading. In fact, there are only two problems. I almost want to say something about how her rush to start it seems a bit much, considering the small amount of work. In fact, Shizune would probably are. No, probably knows how little there is and simply doesn't care. Yeah, it, it seems like the workload doesn't matter to her as much as the fact of that there is work and the actual amount is unimportant. She approaches everything with the same level of ambition. While I'm reading, I let my eyes wander around the room and catch Hanako trying her hand at solving the problems. 
It looks like she's working alone. I can't remember seeing her working with other people before. Thinking back to how shy she is, it's understandable. Hey, that girl over there. Huh? Who, he chan Her, Hanako, over there. Does she always work alone? I think so, he chan Do you feel sorry for her because she's alone? I, I, was, I was just thinking that maybe she could work with us or something. Hmm. No, I don't think that would be a good idea, he chan Why not? She chan wouldn't get along with her. Why? Misha shuffles around the question, letting out a laugh that sounds very strange. It's nervous, but still has that light lighting up and down quality present to, in everything she says. Just because, he chan By now, Shizune has noticed our conversation and makes me realize how Misha has been signing everything she has been saying this whole time. What? she chan the, the friend of my enemy is my enemy? That sounds too harsh. I'm not going to say that. You always well, said it anyway. I know, he chan it's fine if you overhear. I wonder if, if this is Misha's way of keeping things fair, since without her I wouldn't be able to understand the, the thing that she, Zune is saying, and vice versa. It's also that it is that also why she signs all the time, so there is never a conversation Zune will be left out of? Anyway, we should start on the problems now, he chan We finish with time to spare, and I decide to ask if there are any alternatives to the cafeteria, as frankly, the food of far has been quite subpar. This sends Shizune and Misha arguing amongst themselves about their favorite restaurants. All of them are downtown, so I don't think we have time to go all the way there. What about the bill? Are they arguing just for the fun of it? Maybe they're, they seem so distracted by it that they don't even notice the start of the actual lunch break. I look over my shoulder towards the back of the classroom. She used to be studying her notes from the previous class. It's an odd sight. Everyone else in the class is busying themselves with the lunch break. Socializing, gossiping, and rearranging desks. The ones with actual box lunches mixed in and chattering like everyone else, only interrupted by bouts of eating. But when I watch Hanako, it feels like I'm the only one who can see her almost as if she was invisible, sort of hiding in plain sight. Is she being bullied? Is she isolating herself from the rest of her class on her own? I see her I see her look over her shoulder towards the classroom's new rear door. Come to think of it, she hasn't turned her page since I've started watching her. I guess she's waiting for someone. What to do? I feel bad for making her run away yesterday, so I, I'd better just say something. Um, hey there, Hanako. <laughs> he so. Well, at least she remembers my name. Hey, I just wanted to apologize for yesterday. I didn't mean to startle you or anything. I'm just new here, and I thought I should get to know my classmates. As Hanako looks up to me, I notice her scarring once more. It's a little bewildering that it's a little bewildering that you can barely notice it in, from across the room, but it's so noticeable from close up. Th that's okay. It it was my fault. Nah, that wasn't anyone's fault. It just it just kinda happened. So are you waiting for someone? I saw you looking at the door before. Y yes, Lily. Oh, you mean Lily, the blind girl? Jeez, you sell. <laughs> Way to be frank. Hanako hardly nods in response, and I can't help but wonder if they're deafening people through their disabilities. Defining uh, people through their disabilities is a fox pass of the worst kind of it, or is just normal here. I guess that explains why Lily took off after her yesterday. She seems like a nice girl. Are you two friends? Yes. As if hoping for Lily to appear, she checks over her shoulder again. I'm, I think I'm making her nervous again. I hope I'm not disturbing you right now. N no, that's not it. It's just easier if Lily doesn't come here. Oh, it's because it's hard for her to get around the classroom? Not 
Really? Hanako's gaze drifts past my shoulder towards Shizune. Shizune? Hanako nods again. What about her? Do they not get along? Hanako shakes her head. Clearly this is something she doesn't want to talk about. It doesn't make a, it doesn't make a strange sort of sense. Shizune and Lily are and Lily not getting along so well. Communication between the two would be all but impossible. It's hard enough not enough talking to Shizune through Misha, even when you can't see whose hands are talking. Hanako is so focused on Shizune that I am the first to notice Lily at the door. Oh, she's here now? Oh, she's here now. Hanako spins around the room to confirm this. Upon seeing Lily, she moves quickly to the door. Lily? Ah, uh, Hanako, good morning. Is the president here? Y yes Hanako glances over the, her shoulder at Shizune again, as if to confirm she can't hear them, even though that's impossible. I suppose we'd best be off then. Lily's sigh and tone, what seems like frustration, ra makes me raise an eyebrow. I guess there's some kind of an 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 enmity between the two. It's intriguing, but that's not really something I should ask about. I'm sure they wanted me to know. If they wanted me to know, they would. They will tell me. It's only my third day here. I should be taking, trying to make new friends, not finding out why people are enemies. Still, it's a little funny to find out what this school has little fused, just like my old high school. Even if people were more tolerant of others, they're still going to get on each other's nerves. Hey, Lily. How are things? I'm sorry I made you run off yesterday. Oh my, is that Hisao? I didn't realize you were here. It seems that it seems that Lily is a little embarrassed about being so frank in front of me. S sorry, Lily. I thought you'd realized. No, it's all right, Hanako. Hisao, please don't worry about yesterday. It was just a misunderstanding. If you say so, I'm still working this place out. Well then, I think you'll find most people here a lot more forgiving than elsewhere. If you're feeling a little confused, please don't be afraid to ask questions. Sure, I'll remember that. Um, Lily? Lily gives a small nod of acknowledgement. I'm sorry, he said, but we must be off. Hanako really doesn't look all around th that comfortable here right now. And Lily still seems a little embarrassed. I wonder if my apologies really made any impact. Mind if I accompany you two? I know I'm kind of pushing it, but... Lily hmms quietly, still smiling. I'm sure we could accommodate you, can't we, Hanako? She looks at Lily, then at me, then she freezes wide-eyed. sure Well then, shall we... where shall we go? I'm sure Lily wouldn't do this easily if she saw how scared Hanako looks, but it can't be helped now. Declining after it sh the deal is sealed would only cause confusion and problems. So we leave all three together. Lily walks up beside the hall, letting her cane gently tap against it now and then. Hanako comes along right beside her, so, th so close to she practically half-hugging her as they go. Although it must make her walking that much harder, Lily takes it in stride. As we turn around the corner of the hallway, something hits me in the chest with the force of a steam train. Hanako shrieks a little and my vision briefly goes black. Ouch! Opening my eyes, I see a pair of saucer-like green eyes looking up at me. They belong to the perpetrator, a short girl who bumped into me and is now fallen down onto the hallway floor. She wears a PE uniform and a very worried frown. The former strikes me as a rather strange thing to have been have on during lunch break. More striking than that, though, is that she doesn't have legs. Or she does, but they aren't flesh and bone. Her pale and very much flesh and bone thighs and, and in shins and the feet made of black metallic or plastic like material. It looked disturbingly artificial and unnatural. It almost makes me forget that my chest is hurting. 
The girl winces a little, rubs her nose, and jumps up. Aw, oh, man. Hey, are you alright? I'm sorry about that, really. I wasn't looking where I was going, and you just came out of nowhere. Sorry. Sorry. She looks really apologetic in a hurt puppy way, looking apologetic. I quickly forget that being angry or something. I quickly forget about being angry or anything, since hurt puppies are my weak spot. It's okay, don't worry about it. Ouch! I'd say that, but there is, but there is a stinking pain growing in my chest, and I know that this is about the biggest possible danger of my condition. Don't overexert yourself. Don't forget your medication, and most of all, don't get hit in the chest. I try to rub my sore plexus in, to chase the pain away, holding my breath in an attempt to, for my to hear my heartbeat. It seems normal. Hey, should I get a nurse? The worried, high-pitched voice of the girl snaps me out of it. I stare at her for a few seconds, dumbfounded, until I realize that I probably looked worse off than I really was. Doubled myself and looking and all over myself and looking all tense. Damn, I over I'm overly worried about my heart. Er, no need. I'm fine. Managing to say that something in response, I pull myself upright. Feeling my sore ribs one last time and then take take a deep breath. She looked she knocked the wind out of me big time, but it's nothing but it's nothing more than that. You sure you're okay? I hit you pretty hard. It's okay. I said I was fine. And nothing's broken. No harm done. That's good, I was He saw what happened. She's not quite up to speed for the obvious reasons, but she sounds very worried. More than that, the situation deserves really. Someone just bumped into me. Nothing serious, just winded. Er, sorry, it was my fault. I was just going to get some stuff and I was kind of in a hurry. That someone here is Emmy, isn't it? The little girl coughs quietly and shovels her plastic or metallic feet looking down at them before saying anything. Hi, Lily. Hanako. I guess the girls know each other. Dude, please try and be more careful. You might be sturdy enough to endure those sorts of accidents, but there are people who aren't. The girl blushes and starts to fidget nervously like a little child caught misbehaving. It's so cute, I find myself smiling. I know that. I... I, um, I was just... Ah, gotta go. Teacher will have my head. I promised to help with the printouts, but I went running instead. Sorry, but I've got to change and everything. Before any of us can say a thing. Emmy has already bolted away, leaving the hallway eerily quiet. Does that thing happen around here? Often. There are more rules in Yamaku than usual for running in corridors. But that rarely stops Emmy, it seems. She shakes her head weakly and offers a slight composed smile. I don't think that there is anything we can do to stop her, I'm afraid. Shall we be off then? Lily heads off along the hallway and Hanako hurries after her. The, ro the route to the room, the two of us, for tea is fairly simple to retrace, being still fresh in my mind from yesterday. Lily and Hanako quickly go about the business for making lunch. Before I can open my small bag of food, Lily is busying herself with her thermos and, and tea bags. As Hanako is setting out their, both their lunch boxes. So this is what you meant by coming here here almost every day. Yes, Hanako and I usually have lunch here. It suits both of us, so we ended up using this room regularly. After seeing Hanako's reactions to me over the past couple of days, I can understand why th this is a boon. That is a boon. That and Lily being able to get here, get some quiet away from the, her class as well. I take my seat la last after Lily poured the tea for us and sits down. The, the more time I spent with these two girls, the more I think that they, that, that they are the perfect foil to Misha and Shizune. Even without a voice, Shizune is a, di 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 Shizune is a direct and brash. Misha seems to get along with everyone, on the other hand. Lily is soft-spoken and relaxed, while Hanako seems to be the shyest girl I've ever met. So, how are you faring in Yamaku, Hisao? You seem a bit flustered before. 
apart from getting lost every now and again and being crash tackled out of my classroom, fine, I guess. You, you, you looked pretty hurt before. Are you really okay? A brief moment, I consider telling Hanako Mui about my condition, but then I hold it back. I can't tell why, but for some reason I feel uncomfortable talking about it to these relative strangers, even though they have been pretty friendly. Yeah, it's nothing. I was just a bit startled. Judging from the two girls' expressions, I don't think that they're buying it. But in what I assume is their way of respecting my privacy, they don't press the matter. I guess that's one way of the unwritten rules of- That's one of the unwritten rules around here. Don't ask. Even if people's conditions are obvious, like Hanako's, there's still bound to, to be a story involved. Everyone has things they don't feel comfortable speaking about. And I think everyone here recognizes that. So, uh... How long have you been at this school? You both seem to know your way around pretty well. Hmm, well... I've been here since the start of high school, but only moved into the dormitory a year ago. Hanako joined at the start of high school as well and moved to the dormitories when she did, if my memory serves right. That's right, since high school. So, you've known each other since then? Since I moved, yes. Hanako was next door to me, so it's only natural, right? R right. Yeah, of course. Living next to somebody is probably reason enough to, be to befriend them, though I'm guessing that Lily's blindness played a part in it as well. I can't imagine Hanako is easily making friends with someone who has to deliberately avoid looking at her scars. With the immediate conversation dried up, we start to eat our lunch. It isn't long before the bells are signaling the end of break. Like me, the girls pack up their lunches inefficiently as they set them out. I guess I'd better be off. I guess I'd better be off. Are you going with Isao, Hanako? Hanako looks up at me for a second. I see that she's considering skipping class. Maybe just to avoid walking to the classroom with me. Y yes I don't know what to think of it. Hanako really is delicate to the point of, of breaking if looked at in the wrong way. It makes me a bit nervous, too, but I push the feeling aside, trying to be as natural as I can. We should hurry, then. Class has already started by the sound of it. Lily gives a small nod of farewell and bends down to take her cane, Hanako and I filing out before her. We, could, we quickly walk down the hallway halls to our respective classes. As we reach the, the door to Lily's cla 3 2 classroom, she turns towards me. Isa, thank you for sharing lunch with us today. My pleasure, Lily. And with that, we part ways with Lily, entering the classroom and leaving Hanako and me to make off to our own. She's still looking like she wants to run away. So, do you want to go get go back to class now? Y yes. Okay then. I feel like I should say something more to her, but it's hard to come up with anything that would appropriate that would be appropriate and safe enough. And, and Lily was right. The more we time we spend around here, the more explaining we have to do. I open the rear door to the class and walk in. The teacher looks up to me, hoping not to say something. However, as Hanako follows and closes the door, he simply nods to us and continues the lecture. This is the third time that Hanako has had her truancy practically ignored. There's definitely something going on here. We make our way to our seats, and I notice the mission student are both missing as well. I wonder if some form of informal agreement where the staff is the perks avoided, afforded to the unique students of the school? Trying to make as little disturbance as I can, I extract the relevant textbooks from my bag and start catching up. Class goes on quietly. The teacher seems like an okay person despite the weird first impression I got and the material is relatively interesting. However, the way he teaches is bi really bizarre as if he expects that everyone is a regular natural genius. When the final bell sounds, I realize that there is still a lot of time left in the day and I'm left wondering what to do. It's odd. The hospital had 24 hours of, of a day of free time, but here, filling the considerably shorter hours feel difficult. Everyone else leaves, and I'm left alone with the teacher. Moto is examining the assignment sheets we were looking on earlier, marking them with a red ball pen. 
Raising his eyes from his paper briefly, he notices me and furrows his brow. What is it, Nakai? And with that being said, that's all the time that we have for now. But before we end things off, I'd like to remind you guys to go follow, to, to like, comment, and share, and subscribe. You know, to help grow us in this, uh, in to help keep our channel growth going forward. Also, go follow my socials. You can find them in the description below along with everything else. Also, join the Discord. It's completely free and when notifications fail, like they always do with YouTube, you'll still get notified when I go live. I, I live stream Mondays and Fridays at 8 p.m. PST, sometimes earlier. You'll get the notification regardless. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.